Hello, my name is Harrison Tankersley, and I am a recent graduate of Savvy Coders Full Stack Development Coding Bootcamp. Today, I'm here to present the platform that I created during my tenure here with all the things that I learned. It's called Adagio, and it is a platform that enables anybody who wishes to be able to see what money Congress people in the United States are receiving from lobbying groups and how much. I'll explain in greater detail in a moment. That's what I'm here to talk to you about. But first, it might make us a little bit of sense to introduce who I am. As I mentioned a moment ago, today I'm a graduate of Savvy Coders Full Stack Development Bootcamp, now seeking my first new position in a formal software development setting. In recent years, I was a student at the University of Colorado Boulder, where I studied Spanish and financial analytics, learning to speak the language of Spanish, do business with Latin America, and use Microsoft Excel for the financial analytics side of things. Since then, I spent time in tech sales at Datadog, selling technical products to technical people, anything from software engineers to CTOs. During that time, I had already known that I had an interest in becoming a technical persona in some respect. That's why I started uh, working at Datadog to begin with. But there, I really grew an envy for software engineers' ability to create whatever apps that they want through speaking to them about the projects that they're doing, as well as working alongside them in a tech environment, seeing as Datadog's a software as a service company. Following that, I was headhunted by Salesforce about a year in, uh, where I sold healthcare software to healthcare companies, it, well, CRM healthcare software to healthcare companies. And I was subsequently let go during the whole big round of layoffs in early March. I have taken that opportunity to expound upon my skills and try to make the transition into a more formal development role where I can be a person who creates things. And that's what brings me here today. So without further ado, I will show you Adagio. But first, I'd like to start with the ideation phase. How did this project begin? I knew from research that I had done previously that all Congress people are required to report any financial doings that they have, whether it be stocks or receiving money from lobbying groups. My original idea was to create transparency into the stock trades of these uh, of these lobbying or of these Congress folks. So people that are from the outside, might be able to trade off of some of the same information that people in Congress are privy to, seeing as they have greater access to people in, inside of the industries that they're legislating over, and part just by virtue of being a part of committees that are legislating the industries, they can know when it might be timely to make a trade. Unfortunately, I ended up running into API limitations. Nevertheless, my project stayed somewhat the same. I wanted to create a platform that people probably on the younger age, 18 to 35, might be interested in to uncover data about their Congress people. Generally looking for people that were uh, tech forward. Eventually I wanna take this, uh, this app into the quantitative traders direction as I take time to aggregate even more information outside of just lobbying data and uh, stock trading data to make educated decisions on what trades might be viable and what trades might have been made with some insider knowledge. So moving on to uh, the wireframes, here's an idea of what it looked like. You might have seen on the bottom of the uh, storyboard there from Mural that I had House, Senate, Trade, News, In and About Us section running at the top of the website. My plan originally was simply to list who from the House of Rep or what trades have been made by people from the House of Representatives divided uh, same deal for Senate and then create fake trades just to provide an opportunity for me to practice receiving user input and storing it into a uh, into a REST API. The idea evolved now rather than having two different pages for the House of Senate, you explore by state and rather than having a trading API, we have a discussion board. So you will see that very soon. One of the biggest hurdles that I ran into when I was creating this was API difficulties. It's known that we are supposed to be able to have access to all of the uh, information from 
our government. That's why this legislation was passed to enable this view into what our uh, elected officials are doing. Nevertheless, it can be hard to come by a well-organized API in the uh, <laughs> with with all the data that I need that's not paid for. I ended up finding one, but it was all in XML to begin with. And this is what it looked like. Unfortunately, I wasn't trained on how to use XML. So all of the code that I had prepared beforehand, before I even had the opportunity to implement the API, wouldn't have worked. So I had to find out a way to convert all of this XML data to JSON. This could be as simple as changing the output in the URL, just adding and output equals JSON in the URL, basically. Nevertheless, it creates a huge mess of data. This isn't how JSON data is usually supposed to be structured because it's been converted from XML to JSON. And then I had to find a way to sort through the nested mess that I had created here. And here's how I did it. It didn't turn out to be too complicated once we really thought about it. When I was originally creating the API and trying to pull up all of this data in each of my uh, views, my thought was that I would have to just go through each one of the nests and the nested data as I was mapping through them to be able to pull up all of the information that I wanted. But there were two problems there. Number one, it was extremely convoluted and messy. And number two, at the end of <laughs> all of the information that I was actually wanting to be able to pull from couldn't be mapped through at the time because it was stored in an object and I needed it to be stored in an array. So what I did to knock out two birds with one stone is first dial down to the attributes portion of this nested mess that you saw a moment ago, put that inside of an array, and then just return that to uh, <laughs> and return that data at the end of the function. So then I could pull up a much simpler boiled down version of this whole mess when I was actually looking to present it in my views. So this is what it ended up looking like. Rather than having to worry about the data being stored in an object, I had already had it dealt with from the moment that it was imported into my application. So I could present the data easily and without too much convoluted nonsense when I was actually uh, creating my tables. Building my own REST API. As I mentioned earlier, I was looking to build a REST API just for the sake of being able to provide user input as well as to make the site a little bit more interactive. Very simple. Here's the schema for it. It's just name and comment because this is a blog post. Uh, obviously, you know, you have to store it as a string, nothing too complicated here. We use MongoDB for this as well, which I'll show in a moment. Here are all the routes. Ignore some of the comments on the routes, but with this API that I have created, you can create, uh, read, update, and delete all of the data that's inputted. You can see here's the schema for uh, updating the uh, the blog posts, for example, but let's let's just show what that looks like in action. So here's the landing page. Went with a pretty basic one. Just got a high quality video from uh, Adobe on the free tier, and was able to upload that to Reddit, which I'll actually show in a minute, and then present it on my site without having to uh, upload 114 megabytes into my repo. We also have this deployed on Netlify right now. If you'd like to check it out, it's at adagiomarketplace.netlify.app. If you are looking at this soon after I publish the video, the address might change. So here's what it is. Anybody who's looking to learn more about their Congress people can input the state that they are interested in. I choose Colorado because I used to live in Colorado. I moved to St. Louis recently. Uh, when I was scrolling through this the first time, I pulled up this random fellow, Doug Lamborn, and I noticed that he is taking a lot of money from defense companies, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Honeywell, Coke Industries all have affiliations with uh, the defense comp or the defense industry in some degree, some more than others. Obviously, Boeing does all sorts of planes, for example. Raytheon, however, produces uh, missiles, I learned. 
So I wanted to learn a little bit more about this guy. He's from a district right next to where I was living for about two years, uh, fifth district in Colorado, just south of Denver. So from there, you can open up the website of the Congress people directly, see what issues they're focused on. And not much of a surprise, the first thing that comes up is national security and missile defense, because one of his biggest funders are Raytheon, who actually produces myth- missiles. All this to say, you know, I, I didn't create this this website to try to tell people how to think or, you know, it's it's not even about what legislation people are passing. It's just we should know who our Congress people are getting money from. And if that's what is driving the decisions for the policies that they are enacting and proposing for in Congress, that should be something that everybody's privy to. It's not always a bad thing. Uh, You know, Hickenlooper, who's a big uh, senator in Colorado, you know, he gets money from Harvard and Google and the University of Colorado, which, you know, I don't think is a huge conflict of interest. A lot of big tech company too, big tech companies too, it seems like do with that as you will. You also can look across a lot of different uh, Congress people and start to notice common trends. There's this one called uh, Democracy Engine, who looks like they had donated quite a bit to John Hickenlooper as well. I've also noticed one called Emily's List, who donates money to uh, uh, like female uh, Congress people to you know promote their runs. So again, it's not always something nefarious, but it's good to know you know where people are getting funding for, funding for their campaigns from, nevertheless. So moving on to the discussion page, as I mentioned earlier, this comment here was written by ChatGPT. You can read it if if you'd like, but it's just a general purpose uh, discussion page for those who are willing to use it. This was what what came from the REST API that I mentioned earlier. Just to illustrate how it works, submitting in common is as easy as typing it in, and then uh, I can actually manage the REST API from MongoDB in the event that somebody's posting something that, I don't know, maybe they're being abusive. I can delete any data that I want and then come back to it and, you know, boom, it's gone. So that's the functionality of the website, essentially. I have greater plans for what I expect to do with it. But that's, you know, that's that's pretty much the bulk of it. So, you know, one thing that I like to mention last is you might recall that the website was here. I'll show you again. This landing page, uh, it came up a few times. We worked in agile groups when we were doing uh, when we were in the boot camp. I was actually the scrum master for mine. And when I was presenting my landing page, people asked, hey, Harrison, how did you create this uh, video so it could it could be responsive with the screen size and always always encapsulate the entire viewport. So I figured just to illustrate how I was using a little bit of CSS as well, I could show it to you right now. So where is it? Should be under hero. Yeah, so I guess it might make sense to actually start from the element because I learned that you could post or that you could do a lot of what I needed to do simply with HTML, whether it be muting the video, which didn't actually have any sound to begin with, I don't believe, but I muted it anyway. Uh, Setting it up on autoplay, as you can see, so right when somebody lands on the website, they get this ominous video of the Capitol, which I liked. Uh, The video loops, so it will never turn off, never stops, always looks like the page is active. Also just lets people know that it's working, which is something that I liked about it, the page is actually loading. And then, as I mentioned earlier, I ended up hosting the video on Reddit because, first of all, it loaded faster, I found, but also having to push a 114 megabyte video up to GitHub corrupted the entire, uh, corrupted the repo because it was too big of a video to send up, which created a huge number of problems. So this turned out to be the best way to do it. And then in terms of actually allowing it to fit the viewport, perfectly regardless of what size it was regardless of what size screen you're looking at uh it didn't turn out to be width and height being set to 100 which is what i thought it would be to begin with but something as simple as 
uh, this element right here where I just say object fit covers the page, push to the back of the page with Z index. So it's not covering the nav bar, which it was at first. And that is, that's, that's, that's the size of it. So I appreciate you taking the time to listen to my video and yeah, thank you.